Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 98 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is something that people have always seen but it probably never actually looked into this fish. It's really interesting. I know you've heard of it but you probably don't know that there's more than one of these. Today's fish that we're talking about is... BAM! The Remora Remora, or the Common Remora. So the Common Remora, or scientific name, Remora Remora, anyone can pronounce this scientific name. Um, it does have another name though, it is known as the Brown Sucker, or the Brown Sucker Fish. It is part of the family Echoniidae. Sorry, kind of messed that one up. Again, that is Echoniidae which that is the family of all the suckerfish, so all the remoras. There's actually many more species of remora than you might think. Everyone kind of thinks remora, and they immediately have this picture, this picture right here. They have this picture. They know what this fish looks like, but they think that it's all one fish instead of being a multitude of fishes. I think in the family there is four or five genera with any number of species beyond that um, some are long some are short we'll go from there <clears throat> now the remora is a common fish um, found worldwide in all the warmer parts of the ocean um, if it's tropical it lives there I can promise you that and it is a pelagic fish primarily found in open water you can find these up shallower but these are primarily a pelagic open water fish um, I mean, just think about what, what does a remora mean to you? Well, they're on these sharks, they're whales, things like that. So they're pretty, pretty common in those open waters. Um, as far as remoras or suckerfish go, the common remora, the remora remora, is actually kind of shorter and thicker set than most of these. Um, if you look at some of the remoras, um, I don't want to do remora remora if you look at some of the pictures of remora fish you have some of these that are significantly more slender like this one right here that one could be a baby i'm not sure but you have this remora um they can get rather slim some of them do so as far as remoras go the common remora is actually a little thicker set than most of them um it's shorter, like I said, but it can still get decently sized. It's, you can reach up about 86.4 centimeters, which is about 34 inches, but most remoras do, do not exceed uh, 40 centimeters, which is about 16 inches. Um, and they're a lot lighter than you think. The max weight on these is usually about 1.1 kilograms, which is 2.4 pounds. They're pretty light. Um, they're a little thicker than you think, but they're like um, as you can tell they do have this long flattened head um, with this lower jaw that sticks way out past the upper jaw like way way out past the upper jaw um, in terms of color you got blackish grayish striped this color you know they, they're pretty variable in color but usually fairly uniform or have these small stripes. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm assuming this is a common remora. I could be completely mistaken. If I am wrong, um, I am not a marine biologist. I am a freshwater aquatic ecologist. So I'm, I'm not going to be extremely good at telling these species apart. Um, in terms of teeth, and remora do have teeth, their teeth are actually fairly, uh, very sharp, uh, pointed teeth. They actually have really crazy teeth. They actually are in recurved as well, meaning they're curved inwards. So they have these teeth, and a lot of people don't realize that. They kind of think that they're parasites or that they're eating minor things, and they actually have these pointed teeth, and they're pretty, you know, predatory in, in a way, in a way. But let's go beyond that. We all know what we want to hear about the suction pad that you can see here, the suction pad, the suction pad. 
I mean, that's a pretty good characteristic of just Remora or Suckerfish. Um, they have this suction pad that's actually was evolved from their dorsal fin. So, you know, those fins that uh, fish have on the back, this one, the first dorsal fin, created this suction pad with like 27 of these little grooves that create that suctioning. And the reason why they have this pointed mouth, if you look at the bottom, you see how they're kind of, they're almost like a fish flipped upside down their body shape. They have a lot of like the back characteristics. They're a little, you know, more pointed on the belly. Well, that's actually so when they do stick to something, it creates a little uh, more hydrodynamic air for them. And that allows them to like not be as big a drain on their host. Um, and they do attach to more than sharks. People think that they are attached to sharks primarily, which they could be. Um, they definitely are, and that's where they're very commonly associated with. But they can actually attach to pretty much any large animal. Um, whales, and I think this is a group of many different species um, around this whale shark. Um, they can attach to the giant manta rays, eagle rays. Um, these two just look at it. But this is a good example of, you can see that lower jaw sticking past and it, they're just, a la they're making themselves as streamlined as possible. And the reason that they're doing this is because they don't want to be a super big drain on the host. Um, you know, they don't want to be that drain on the host, but they can be. Um, you know, that's why they're being so hydrodynamic is because they want their host to get around. Remoras do not have a swim bladder, and while they can swim in open ocean like you can see here, they need to constantly move, and that's why they have to attach to constantly moving large animals because they can't stay in still water. They have to constantly be moving and refreshing their jaw. And those sharply pointed teeth, um, there was a little bit of debate on what they actually ate. And it turns out they kind of eat anything. They eat plankton, they'll eat other fish, and then they'll also pick the dead skin and parasites off of these um, manta rays, sharks, turtles, whatever. They'll actually go around and pick that. And those teeth help kind of pry any sort of those parasites that come off, things like that. It's really... Um, really really neat and you can even find small species of remoras that will go into sharks mouths and clean around the teeth um, And they can maybe even like baby rem uh, common remoras will do that and speaking of babies um, There's not like really anything known about the reproduction um, the only thing they know is that they're fairly quickly developing because they have found common remoras that are an inch long that look exactly like adults but only an inch long so they can grow two centimeters by the way for my non-american uh, folks um so from two centimeters up to three feet they seem to be about the same body shape they don't seem to have that really small larval stage but now for the interesting fact that we're gonna end the video on, which by the way, um, I should mention one thing before I do that. They can be sold in an aquarium. Don't get these in an aquarium, please don't. Unless you know what you're doing, don't get these in an aquarium. I'm just gonna say that. They range from 85 to like 170. There's some rare color morphs that are like $2,000. Don't get this in an aquarium. It's just, please don't, please don't. But now for the interesting fact that we're gonna end the video on, um, and this, I've heard of this, and then I, there's actually kind of two facts. Remoras have been sort of mythologized worldwide for like different reasons. Um, and, you know, they're very important. They're doing these things and people see them, but th it's the value they have to humans is just, it's, it's different uh, from place to place. And I should just stop talking it into it. Um, one of the reasons that they are so heavily regarded in some Native American cultures and just Native cultures is that some Native cultures actually use these to fish. What they'll do is they will attach a line to the tail right here, right here, and then let them swim out and then they'll attach 
um, those remoras will swim off and because they're tired and trying to get away they'll attach itself to a larger fish a turtle a shark and then after they attach they will the fishermen will actually pull in the remora carefully to like bring in that larger fish that turtle um, really bizarre way of fishing and definitely an interesting way to go about it um, you know and so some cultures actually ate the remoras as well and then some others actually never ate the hunting fish and they were regarded as like you know prized possessions and they sang songs about them um, but then on the other side they've been um, associated even to the Roman and Greek times um, and I have to look at this page because I forgot to write these down on my notes um, Madagascar had them like Greeks and Romans had a lot of information about them um, now I should talk about the Madagascar well this is kind of weird um, they would attach Madagascar shamans in Madagascar would actually cut pieces of the suction disc off and attach them to the necks of wives so when the man would go off hunting or whatever to war for some reason that was to assure the faithfulness in their husbands while the husband was gone I don't know how that came about but that's interesting um, Greece and Romans they had their things but the interesting most interesting Roman fact so all of this interesting fact by the way all these interesting is just like how actually important and um, how much like humans have thought about remoras over the years so and the most interesting of these is the fact that ancient Romans actually um, attributed the death of Emperor Caligula, Caligula to remoras. Um, they blamed this fish for an emperor's death. They believed in ancient times that the remoras would attach themselves to ships and that actually would cause so much drag on the ship that the ship would slow down and they attributed the emperor's death that so many remoras attached to the ship that it held it back and enemy ships overtook it and in fact the latin name for remora actually means holding back so that sort of um thinking about that like oh my goodness our emperor died it had to have been remoras holding the ship back let's call them remoras so that's actually kind of how it got its name it's attributed to the fact that it is a holding things back i should also mention that these are a they're they are not a parasite they are a mutualistic um symbiote meaning that both species benefit they don't the remoras don't have to move but they clean off the parasites and everything from the sharks and keep them sort of clean while providing a little drag and things like that but thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it hope to see you again take care of yourself take care of your loved ones and peace we are almost to fish friday 100 guys we're almost there have a great day peace